It's the Health in the Real World podcast. It's time to start the show with Chris Jenke as your host. Here to give you everything that you need when it comes to fitness strategies. We keep it simple and easy. It's your roadmap to get healthy. You don't need equipment and you don't need a gym. Just the right strategies to get you fit and trim. The Health in the Real World podcast is sponsored by... My name is Randy Herring, and I'm the author of The Fitness Mindset, Seven Habits for Peak Performance. Buy my book to build strong, healthy habits and transform your mind and your body. Hello, and welcome to Health in the Real World. I'm Chris Jenke, joined today by Rachel Riccobono. And uh, Rachel is the author of The Long Way Home. Rachel, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Give us a little background about how this book came about, your passion for um, talking about mental health and that whole story behind it. Absolutely. So I, just a brief overview, just introduce myself. I'm 24. I'm from uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, born and raised in the Grand Canyon State, beautiful state of Arizona. Um, Essentially, I actually, I just graduated in December from Arizona State University studying psychology and special events management, an unlikely but very effective pairing. <laughs> um, and I, the, my book came about in, I would say, a very unconventional way. I had no intention of writing a book. Um, I don't think I even would have identified myself as a writer before the past two years. Um, I'd never shared a piece of my writing before like 2019. Not, I mean, nothing more than even a school paper. So I, little background, I went to San Diego State, went out of state for college, really wanted to get out of the desert, experience things. Um, shortly after, ended up being diagnosed with Hashimoto's. So a form of hypothyroidism for anyone who's not aware. Um, shortly after that, because things kind of went to hell in a handbasket over there. Just not at all what I imagined and my life was kind of falling apart. So I transferred back home to Arizona State, finished my degree there. Um, But while I was there, I started writing articles for the Odyssey Online, if you're familiar. Um, Most people are only familiar because they're like those articles that pop up on your Facebook page. Right. I was writing those at the time. Um, About a year after I'd written probably 20 plus articles, I had a professor from Georgetown reach out to me about my writing and this opportunity he had through New Degree Press in Washington, D.C. in the Creator Institute there. So I got on a call and (laughs) was quite literally terrified, Um, had no intention, like I said, of writing a book, Um, no book ideas, lots of things that I was passionate about. I'm incredibly passionate about whether it's psychology, mental health, um, life purpose, motivation, you name it. Um, But didn't really know how to formulate that passion into a book considering I'd only journaled, written for school or short articles here and there, but nonetheless said yes, uh, terrified. Uh, About a year and a half later, a million editors and different mentors, uh, my book is now on Amazon, it's in Barnes and Noble, Walmart, it's distributed across the US and in different countries. It's kind of crazy to think that my book and my words are, have spread to different continents. Um, So yeah. So uh, talk a little bit about what the book is about, um, specifically like overarching. Yes, overarching, we go through, it's really personal growth and development. So really diving into the personal journey that each of us go through. So I think for a very long time, I'm, I'm type A OCD. I'm a teacher's daughter. I think from the minute I came out of the womb, I was like, all right, I've got a plan. I know what I want. And I think when my life fell apart, all of that kind of went with it. And I was like, I'm, I'll admit it. I'm completely lost. The things I want, I don't want anymore. Um, and I think I more so went through that process at the time alone that when I really started writing and sharing my work and 
people were enjoying the taboo topics I was covering, it kind of opened that floodgate to talk about my experience with my health condition and what I went through as far as I think really diving deep and doing the work on myself. So I wanted my book to feel like that type of authentic conversation that I would have wanted from a friend or really needed at the time um, going through, whether it's just <laughs> how to identify your goals or healing your own trauma and, or even hell, accepting your trauma. I think that's harder than, you can't heal if you can't accept it. So um, really more so my book is about finding that authentic version of yourself and kind of catering your life around that so that you can achieve the things you want and you can feel that you are living a worthwhile life. You know, all of these things, whether it's the thoughts that we choose every day or the way we choose to spend our time every day, it, it contributes to what we think about our life and our satisfaction and our happiness. So yeah, I'd like to think Definitely. my book is a brief overview and a very long-winded conversation on all of those topics. Yeah, yeah, and, and writing about those topics. And anytime somebody writes a book, I always, I know there's a um, personal growth process in just writing the book because, you know, we all have thoughts about a lot of issues, but the ability to be able to organize those thoughts into one cohesive book, it mm -hmm. takes some effort and you have to clarify your own thinking on this. Did that happen to you during this process? Very, very much so. <laughs> And I think I went through so many different, a, a wide range of emotions, a wide range of different phases. There were, out of that year and a half period, there were months where I couldn't, I just, I could not write. And I had such bad writer's block, whether it was that I was picking apart my own words I'd already written, or whether I, like when I got to my chapter about trauma, I wasn't even going to touch trauma within personal growth and development because I could talk for days. And there is so much research and there's so many different avenues and ways to approach it. Um, but it was really actually, I was talking, I was on a Zoom call with one of my developmental uh, editors at the time. And we were talking about my writer's block and about how I was just having a really bad week, whether it was with my mental health and how I was talking to myself. So I was writing about my autoimmune disease. So I think as you write about those things, because I wanted to come across really, like I said, authentic and true to myself. And I didn't want to hold anything back. Like what's the point of sharing those things if you're not going to actually kind of put your heart on the table and really have an open conversation about it. But that's much easier said than done. And I think I re-experienced or I think had to re-heal some things and reassess so many times throughout the process. You know, I mean, yeah. it's it's hard to organize those thoughts and share them, but I think that you, because it, I had gone through, I would say most, or like a good portion of that personal growth journey that I talk about in my book prior, it was one of those things where, yeah, I feel I kind of had to like put myself back in that version of me to get my point across. And that alone was traumatic, so... <laughs> Yeah, wow. You almost did what actors do, like uh, method actors. They have to get into a yeah. sort of like a dark space if they're going to play that I person. And then that. <laughs> you get to almost learn, you know, learn from the experience again, right? I absolutely. I mean, it's probably I'm the same type of person that likes to watch my favorite movies over and over again because I see them a different way and from a different perspective every time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a firm believer in that with life experiences too. But it was definitely very interesting. I think it is more than rewarding afterwards, though, even though I'm sure one of my walls was just completely covered in sticky notes at one point. <laughs> right. It's one of those where it was like, it was such a messy process where people would like on the outside be like, oh my God, that's so exciting. How's it going? And I was like, oh my God, I'm trying to keep my head on straight. <laughs> yeah. I'm re-experiencing things. I'm attempting to formulate coherently how to express that to people, but also then organizing it. So I'm coming across in an eloquent and um, organized manner. It's very, yeah, it's very hard to organize things in a clear way and, and yeah, so it's concise. make connections, yeah, 
yeah yeah make connections and I mean I don't know what it was for you but I think the average writer edits out like 90 percent of their work like you know you write a book that's a thousand pages and then you end up with like 200 yeah. right 200 and like 52 words <laughs> right right so uh but well done how how long did the process take to to get the book um drawing board to publishing on amazon probably a year and a half nice. and really the program through uh the creator institute is designed to be like a six month process because you have a cohort you have a support group you have you know three different editors and copy editors and whatnot so they kind of streamline you through that process so that you're writing like a second time author even though you're a first time author so having that I will say was incredibly helpful too I think if I had not had that I probably would not have a published book right now um so I can't say enough great things about that I think you should never be writing a book alone whether mm -hmm. it's you talking out ideas with friends or having an editor or having those other things like I think you need that support yeah yeah agreed agreed what would you tell people from your experience of writing the book and even before going through your own experience mental health emotional health what are some big uh you know big keystones for that like important points that you want to address um i think first of all it's a process and i the word balance is thrown around quite a lot, um, whether it's within health and wellness or mental health and growth and whatnot. I talk about it in my book a little bit, but I think it's kind of like a trapeze act. We are we feel super at balance one moment, but then we're you're going to inevitably have moments where you, you're feeling like you're falling and you're off balance, but you then have to kind of recenter and take that balance back. But like that's life in general. I don't think that. I think oftentimes, at least within this country, within American culture, we are not as collectivistic in nature. So I think we're constantly on this, like, like we were talking about earlier, this hamster wheel to kind of like nowhere, whether it's, oh, I'm going to be happy when I get this job. I'm going to be successful when I accomplish this. Like we're constantly and perpetually, I think, waiting for something or hanging in the sidelines, waiting to like be at that perfect place. I don't think we're ever going to be at that perfect place. And when you are, you're not going to realize it because you're looking forward still. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that is half the battle. I'm still, I, I had a friend that used to tell me this all the time. We used to have these long winded philosophical conversations and he'd be like, you know, the more that I know, the more that I feel like I don't know anything. And I don't think I fully felt the weight of that until the past two years, whether it was doing research and just like we were talking about doing like, more work on myself through writing this that, yeah, I feel that on a daily basis, I'm 24 years old, I'm a college graduate. Yes, I'm employed. You know, I, I check all these off all these other boxes within my own world, but I still on the daily, like we all have this sense of like imposter syndrome where we still don't feel good enough or we still don't feel like we're there or that we're, you know, on that pedestal, but like in reality, younger me is so proud because I have accomplished so many things. So I have to kind of remind myself of that, that yeah, this is a process. I'm not meant to accomplish everything I want to right away. Right. If your and, life was a video game, you know, you don't want to beat the video game in 24 years. No, you want to take your time and enjoy every level. Yep. Enjoy yeah. every level. Yeah. You mentioned imposter syndrome. That's a, that's a real thing for sure. It is. I mean, I probably, I had a conversation with myself in my head before even getting on here that it's like, you know, I meet people out and like, and my friends, of course, are, love me and boast and in an endearing way or like, oh, she's an author, this and that. I'm like, I don't feel like an author right. on the daily. I feel like a 24 year old who's still trying to find her place in life. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, I'm a 42 year old still trying to find this place in life. So there's, there's that. I think that's all we can do. Like, I think a lot of, whether it's life satisfaction or happiness, like I think it boils down to moments. Um, yes. You've got to find moments here and there, whether it's to sit yourself down and have tough conversations or yep. to say, you know what, 
screw it, I'm having the glass of wine and taking a bubble bath. I, I'm not checking my email this evening. Right. You know, you, you have to take those moments because for all we know, we have one life. So I don't intend on spending it running on the wheel. <laughs> and we don't know how long that life is going to last. And Correct. Your, your friend who mentioned that, you know, the older he gets, the more he realizes that I really don't know much. I can really identify with that. And I have yeah. children and the, the people who think they know everything are like, like the two-year-old knows everything, right? But <laughs> versus, versus like the grandpa or grandma who's, you know, in their 80s, 90s, who is so open-minded and listens to everyone and enjoys hearing the different points of view is, it, it's, I think it, it offers like a lot of peace when you can get to that point and realize that, you know, it, it's like, you've actually hit on two balance you mentioned balance but i'm going to use yeah. it again um you know the imposter syndrome which is you know oh i'm not good enough to be on this podcast or who am i to say i'm an author or whatever else but balancing that with you know being open-minded enough and flexible with our thinking and listening to other people's points of view it, it's sort of like a you know you want to be confident enough to say yeah i am an author yeah, I and am, share your ideas and whatnot. Yeah. You need to hear those things. I had definitely had to get over that hump in the writing process where I've had multiple mentors or multiple editors be like, get out of your head right now. Like, yeah. I'm telling you that you have good ideas. I'm telling you that people need to hear this. Like, what yeah. makes you think that they don't? Right. You have good ideas. And at the same time, you're wise enough to realize that these are my ideas and they're important and let me hear your ideas because let's start this conversation and that's that is really one of the reasons why I started this podcast is like I think a certain way and I think I'm I've thought through a lot of my positions but it's great to meet people new people like you and other people I've talked to today who I'm like wow they think very differently than I do yet the same so it's it's yeah. uh, it's interesting hum, you know humans are we're an interesting species, right? As far as like what goes on in our heads. Yeah. That's why I chose to study psychology. I mean, I'm obviously, I'm not practicing it in my daily life. I actually work in hospitality and events. <laughs> I'm an event oh, planner still use it. in my free time. Um, but I use it every day. And I yeah. think the things I've learned are such an asset to my own life alone that like that's worth every penny. Yeah. Well, psychology is a good foundation for event planning. I would imagine you, you need to talk with your client and get into their head. Like, what do you need? What are you looking for? How can we best collaborate on this? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Especially um, I've been working with couples for the last six months. Uh, I'm un working underneath a wedding planner in the greater Phoenix area right now. So that alone, yes, the psychology is a wonderful asset. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely need that as a tool. This wedding's awesome. one of those other things where people, you know, we anticipate this one day our entire life and then there's a lot of expectations and all these things. And Right. Right. That's huge. Um, Rachel, I want to give you a chance to, um, <laughs> kids in the background, I want to give you a chance to uh, go back to that university that you graduated from and, um, and give your keynote speech. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, give your keynote speech. You are the expert that they bring back to give the keynote, the motivational talk for the graduates on how you think they can get the most out of their lives. So go real big picture, how you think they can get the most out of their lives. What, what would you say to motivate them? I would say two things. Um, I would say one, living someone else's life and someone else's dreams and expectations is never going to get you where you want to be. So I think going back to that authentic state of really doing the hard work and digging deep and kind of getting your hands dirty, doing that self-exploration is priceless. It's going to change your life. It's not going to be easy. Like everyone says, it's going to be messy and hard and confusing. And there might be trauma that comes from that alone, but I think that it's so worth it. And then to that, life itself is really just a collection of moments. So I think taking the time to appreciate and live in those small moments and recognize 
when you're mentally in the past or stuck in the future and to really ground yourself in the present moment because that's really all we have. 100%, 100%. Rachel, remind us what the name of your book is and how to get a hold of it. So it is called The Long Way Home, Lifelong Learner's Guide to Authenticity and Transformation. Um, you can find it on Amazon. Also, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, you name it. My handle is at, and it's R-A-C-H-H underscore R-I-C-C. My name's Rachel Riccobono. Look it up on Google, find it, find me. I'd love to have a conversation. All right, sounds good. Again, this is Health in the Real World, joined today by Rachel Riccobono. Thank you so much, Rachel, and we'll Thank be in you. touch with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Health in the Real World show. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Visit mycorebalance.com to learn more.